at a time that uh, the NRA seems to uh, be atrophying uh, for a lot of a lot of issues uh, and not as much a political force as the left seems to give it credit these days, the gun rights movement at the state level is thriving. Uh, in fact, uh, we are very soon, uh, Georgia's House and Senate have both passed versions of constitutional carry in those states. Uh, they're reconciling them right now. It looks like it'll pass. You'll have 24 states that have passed it. Uh, it looks like we may get to 26 states pretty quickly. And uh, you're going to have a half the country in states with uh, where you don't have to have extra governmental permission to carry your firearm once you've been able to buy it. Uh, we're not getting it at the federal level, and nor are we going to get it in very progressive states. Uh, but progressives have concentrated their populations in a small number of states where conservatives are more spread out. And, and a lot of independent and moderate people have come to the gun rights side, particularly as we've had a crime wave in the last couple of years. If anything, it's the defund the police efforts and the crime wave that have driven a lot of Americans to adopt a Second Amendment affirming position that has led to now half the country being in constitutional carry states. Mm, interesting. So uh, it sounds like uh, from from what you said there that and from reading the piece that you think the gun rights movement or at least the the movement for more people to own firearms is is really succeeding uh, quite significantly over the past decade or so because of the passage of these permitless carry laws uh, and also the big gun sale spikes that we've experienced just recently here. Uh, yeah, and in fact, I, I've, I've quoted you in the piece mm -hmm. and, and a lot of your reporting on the record number of gun sales in the country over the last couple of years. Uh, I, I've, I've said for a very long time that the synonym for gun owner in America is Republican, uh, somewhat flippantly, but also people who own guns in this country tend to shift in their voting patterns. And it's not one of those things we've seen in the data over time where it's conservatives buy guns, therefore they vote conservatives. It's actually anyone who buys a gun in this country uh, overwhelmingly over time begins to shift their positions on things like individual rights and gun ownership. Uh, and it, it's working somewhat to the detriment of the left. And it also does come at this time where national gun groups are kind of stymied in Washington. Uh, and the reason I actually call the piece Guns, Babies in the USA is, is focusing on that second part of it that, uh, you know, the gun rights movement has been so successful in this country and the NRA for a very long time did lead it uh, that it's allowed gun rights groups in the country to kind of kind of atrophy, kind of morph into just fundraising entities that aren't really putting points on the board. And there's a worry, for example, if the Supreme Court were to come back and uh, end Roe versus Wade as we know it. What happens to the vast array of pro-life groups in the country that have been set up over years and decades to advance it? Do they just suddenly become the grifty fundraising organizations or, or how do they shift? And so I think there's a warning here for other groups on the left and the right. When your issue wins, what happens to all the groups that advance the cause across the finish line? I think that's really an interesting point of view because you don't really hear a lot of people um, in the gun rights side of, of the aisle uh, arguing that that the really acknowledging how much success I guess there's been. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, they can't. Who wants to give a, a group money and says, hey, we've been so successful. Half the country's now got a uh, constitutional carry. Give us money. <laughs> right. It, 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 it doesn't sell you well once you become so successful to brag about your success. That is that is interesting uh, point of view. I mean, that's always been an interesting thought, I think, with any issue advocacy group, because, yeah, the the, <laughs> the reality of these groups is that the better they actually do, the worse it is for their group because then they become right. less uh, needed and fewer people are going to give them money. And and uh, you do see this. Um, the NRA has even talked about this to some degree in uh, the, you know how the fundraising works, um, uh, especially uh, more so in the you know year to year shift because in an off year people aren't giving as much money generally mm -hmm. to any political group, but certainly the NRA is, would be among those. Uh, whereas they're, because election years are where people are more interested in what's going on. And there's more of a threat towards uh, the interests of, you know, gun owners or NRA members. And so they, there's an influx of, of donations at that point in time. Um, I, so I think it's, it's interesting to hear, uh, you know, the, the argument laid out that actually one of the reasons the NRA has dealt with this corruption, the reason, one of the reasons that they 
you know, uh, went astray, I guess you could say, is because uh, they were too successful. Yeah, I, look, I, I think so. Um, the NRA for years was the organization that even Democrats in Washington feared. They lambasted it, they attacked it, but they also knew if the NRA spoke, uh, then their voters would listen. And as the gun rights movement became very successful, you had an evolution within the, the NRA's uh, lobbying arm and their political arm. They more and more became kind of an establishment Republican organization, not necessarily a gun rights organization. I used to call them out regularly for uh, being just like the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the, the the Republican arm of the Republican Party advocating uh, whichever Republicans the Republicans in Washington wanted. Uh, but they could only get there because they have been very successful. They're probably never going to get nationwide constitutional carry, but – they got the Heller decision uh, that they, they helped advance that decision. Uh, they were able to get the Second Amendment now incorporated against the states. The last of the uh, Bill of Rights to be incorporated against the states, they got it. Uh, you got half the country in constitutional carry states. You're close to half right now. Uh, how do you move forward with your gun agenda? What does it then look like after that? Um, and I think other organizations, regardless of where they go or where they stand, they run into this. I mean, for example, uh, the, the, the right to work movement has been very, very successful in the country. Where does the right to work movement go, uh, when it's been that successful, uh, where does the pro-life movement go, uh, when it's been that successful, uh, those organizations need to think about it. And frankly, I think some organizations, I'm not saying the NRA applies here, but some organizations in these issues eventually have to say we've won. Can't we wind down now instead of just sucking up money that could be spent elsewhere? Hmm. That's interesting. But I mean, obviously, you also still have uh, quite a lot of opposition to uh, what the NRA wants to do or what right. the gun rights uh, movement wants to do. And you even have uh, in some corners uh, politicians becoming more aggressive, people like Beto O'Rourke in, in Texas. Right. Uh, saying they outright want confiscation. And so it, it is interesting. Well, that, that was until a couple of weeks ago. He's he's had to change his mind <laughs> right. again because he's yes. running for a different office. <laughs> he's he's uh, changed it and then changed back. And then and then now is yeah. uh, saying uh, is, he's kind of all over the place with with confiscation. But, um, but you know, the though, point it, is, just you know, to your point, yeah. that, that makes it even more remarkable how successful it's been because the fresh money and the big money is on the the gun control side, uh, the Mike Bloomberg's of the world, uh, the uh, Gabby Giffords of the world. Uh, you've got the 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 faces, the voices, the news media, the billionaires, the millionaires, the Hollywood crowd. They're all on the gun control side, and yet the louder they've become, the more hysterical they've become. The more CNN has gun control town halls, the more they seem to be set back. It it doesn't seem to be an issue that Americans really resonate with anymore, particularly as so many Americans now own guns. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really hard to take someone seriously who refers to a magazine as a clip once you've become a gun owner and you suddenly realize, oh, they don't actually know what they're talking about. 